Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session, I will be doing a quick recap on the topic of the hypocalcemia. So, if you see the normal calcium levels, it is around 9 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. That will be the normal calcium levels. And to call it as hypocalcemia, it should be less than 9 milligrams per deciliter. And first of all, you need to know what is the most common cause of the hypocalcemia. We have a very important endocrine disorder that is the hypoparathyroidism. See, <clears throat> parathyroid hormone is the one which will increase the calcium levels. And how it will increase the calcium levels? By increasing the osteoclastic activity, the parathormone will increase the calcium levels. <clears throat> so, when there is no parathormone, that is when there is hypoparathyroidism, the osteoclastic activity is not there that will make the individual to land up in hypocalcemia and the renal failure see in patients with renal failure <coughs> there is decreased vitamin d synthesis and vitamin d is the one which is required for absorption of calcium across the gat so if vitamin d is not there secondary to renal failure that can make the individual to land up in hypocalcemia then the hyperphosphatemia See, whenever there is increase in phosphate, this phosphate, it will try to form a precipitate with the calcium. That is calcium phosphate is being formed. So once there is calcium phosphate formation, the calcium is being utilized. So there will be hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. <coughs> this is another important cause for the hypocalcemia. Why? Whenever there is the hypomagnesemia, Right, whenever there is hypomagnesemia, parathormone levels will be reduced. Right, parathormone levels will be reduced. Magnesium is required for the secretion of parathormone from parathyroid gland. And if there is hypomagnesemia, that will make the individual to land up in hypoparathyroidism and that will cause the hypocalcemia. So, the most common causes of hypocalcemia include hypoparathyroidism, renal failure, hyperphosphatemia, and then hypomagnesemia. Now, what are the drugs that will cause the hypocalcemia? The drugs that will cause hypocalcemia include loop diuretics. Loop diuretics, they will cause the excretion of calcium. Then, phenytoin, which is an anti-epileptic drug which will cause hypocalcemia. Next, alendronate. Alendronate is a bisphosphonate. So, what these bisphosphonates will do? Bisphosphonates will inhibit the osteoclastic activity or will inhibit the bone resorption and thereby they can cause the hypocalcemia. Then, Foscarnet will also cause lowering the calcium levels. So these are the drugs which will cause the hypocalcemia. Loop diuretics, phenytoin, alendronate and then the foscarnet. Now, how does the renal failure cause hypocalcemia? Just now I have discussed that in the kidney, <coughs> that is in the proximal convoluted tubule, you have the presence of enzyme 1-alpha hydroxylase. And this 1-alpha hydroxylase, Right, this 1-alpha hydroxylase, it is required for hydroxylation of vitamin D. And this 1-alpha hydroxylase is the one which will form the active form of vitamin D. Right, which will form the active form of vitamin D, which is nothing but calcitriol. So, calcitriol is formed within the kidney. So, if vitamin D or calcitriol, what is its function? Its function is to absorb the calcium, right, to absorb the calcium from the GAT, right, to absorb the calcium from the GAT. So, if there is renal failure, the vitamin D is not synthesized and calcium absorption from the GAT does not occur and that will make the individual to land up in hypocalcemia. Next. How does hyperphosphatemia cause the hypocalcemia? Hyperphosphatemia will cause the precipitation of the calcium in the tissues and calcium is being utilized and that makes the individual to land up in hypocalcemia. Now, how does hypomagnesemia cause hypocalcemia? Low magnesium levels, they can occur from malnutrition of alcoholism. So when there is low magnesium that will prevent the release of parathormone from parathyroid gland and whenever there is hypoparathyroidism the 
calcium absorption from the bones does not occur and that makes the individual to land up in hypocalcemia now how does alkalosis even alkalosis will cause hypocalcemia how is that alkalosis decreases the free calcium levels right alkalosis decreases the free calcium levels by causing increased binding of calcium to albumin right alkalosis will cause increased binding of calcium to albumin that will make the individual to land up in the hypocalcemia now what is pseudo hypocalcemia see pseudo hypocalcemia occurs with low albumin levels right it occurs with low albumin levels and how much is the normal albumin level normal albumin level will be around 3.5 to 5 milligrams per deciliter right 3.5 to 5 milligrams per deciliter so whenever there is low albumin the calcium that is the free calcium levels they remain normal while the total calcium levels they decrease why because the albumin level is low so bound form of calcium will be reduced so the total calcium level decreases and that is called the pseudo hypocalcemia so whenever there is low albumin what is the correction that you will do to correct for albumin you need to add 0.8 to the calcium level for every 1 g below the level of the albumin how much is the normal albumin level that is around okay just now we have discussed that is around 3.5 to 5 g per deciliter for suppose right for suppose if the albumin level is around 2 g so how much time it is below 4 of the albumin that is almost like two times so how much like for example if the serum calcium of the individual is around 8 then what you need to do you need to add 0.8 once and again you need to add 0.8 because it is like two times less than compared to that of the four so to correct albumin add 0.8 to the calcium level for every 1 g below 4 of the albumin so that is how you will make out the true calcium levels right so whenever there is low albumin it will show you falsely low calcium that is called pseudo hypocalcemia then followed by that why massive blood transfusion causes hypocalcemia see massive blood transfusion gives hypocalcemia because of binding calcium to the citrate which is present in the transfused units of the blood see citrate is being used for storing the packed beds blood cells and this particular citrate will bind to the calcium right and where is this citrate present citrate is present in the transfused units of the blood so citrate by binding to the calcium that will make the individual to have hypocalcemia so the next question is what are the clinical features of the hypocalcemia so hypocalcemia they present with the features of increased neuronal hyperexcitability and as a part of the increased neural hyperexcitability the patient can present with seizures that is the epilepsy then they will have tetany and then circumoral numbness they will have tingling of the extremities so these are the features of the hypocalcemia next what are the ecg changes in hypocalcemia the ecg changes that appear in hypocalcemia is they will have the prolonged qt interval so if you take the normal qt interval the normal qt interval is around 360 to 440 milliseconds right so that will be the normal qt interval and when there is prolonged qt interval the qt interval will be more than 440 milliseconds that will be the ecg changes in patients with the hypocalcemia and in these patients with hypocalcemia the cataracts develop like what exactly is the reason is not known then finally how do you treat hypocalcemia see whenever there is acute hypocalcemia you need to give the intravenous formulation of the calcium gluconate but as a maintenance therapy 
right as a maintenance therapy we need to give the oral formulations of the calcium now apart from calcium the vitamin d replacement is also very much required so that is about the treatment of hypocalcemia so you need to know hypocalcemia is when when the calcium levels are less than 9 mg per deciliter and the common causes include renal failure vitamin d deficiency hyperphosphatemia and then hypomagnesemia the clinical features are mainly tetany seizures and perioral paresthesias and how will you diagnose by measuring the serum calcium levels ecg shows prolonged qt interval and the treatment in acute hypocalcemia you need to give intravenous calcium gluconate okay so the and whereas oral calcium replacement has to be given as a maintenance therapy so this is about the hypocalcemia thank you very much